So the Sony FX6 has got a cheeky little firmware upgrade and I thought, you know what, I'd give you lot an update on the updates. Uh, and in my opinion, these new upgrades should have been in the camera when it first bloody came out. So yeah, I've been messing about with a beta version of this new upgrade. Um, the official update is coming at the end of January. So yeah, I don't wanna waste no one's time. Let's get stuck into this one, mate. Bosh. So first up, we've got raw external recording via the HDMI port. Thank God. Originally, we was only limited to the SDI, which basically meant that we had to go and get an Atomos Shogun seven inch recorder, absolutely massive for a camera like this. Most people have already got a Ninja V, which records via the HDMI. So that makes so much more sense for people to record onto that recorder. You don't need the SDI to HDMI converter anymore. It's a much better sized monitor for this particular camera in my opinion. Um, and I think a lot of people are gonna want that because the A7S III's got it via HDMI. FX3's got external recording via the HDMI, so happy days. Update number two, and in my opinion, probably my favorite one, we've finally got touch tracking and touch object tracking on the monitor. Even the Xperia Pro I has got touch tracking. Finally, we've got it in the FX6. Been waiting for ages for this feature. A7S 3 has got it, fx 3 has got it. Should have been here a long, long time ago. Oi, oi, who's that then, Jason Vong? Here we go, it's the man himself. Me and Jason got a bit of sushi, down a few beers. Absolute legend, you can't go wrong with that geezer. What's Jason up? Vong! How's it's going? Yeah, boy. Coming live to you in London, Jason Vong is never wrong. <laughs> Touch tracking approved by Jason Vong himself. Update number three, we've now got lens breathing compensation. Now, a lot of you already know, especially Sony glass, Sony E-mount glass, most of it is actually stills glass. It's not actually cinema glass. These lenses are meant to take still photos. Now, stills lenses typically breathe a lot. That basically means if you're gonna focus really, really close and then rack your focus, your field of view is either gonna get tighter or wider. Now, in video, it's very distracting. It's not a very nice look. A lot of people wanna minimize that breathing when it comes to big focus pulls. In the menu system, we can now compensate for that breathing as long as the lens actually can talk and communicate to the camera. So most E-mount glass is gonna work. I've done a few tests and it worked brilliantly. So that combined with the touch tracking for me, amazing new features. So next up, we've got bokeh control. Now bokeh control is essentially a feature that allows you to do a depth of field pull. Now a lot of you will be really familiar with a focus pull, but a depth of field pull is essentially where you can change your depth of field from being really, really shallow to really deep or vice versa. Now this is a really cool storytelling feature which if you can isolate a character in the front of your scene, stick your aperture at like f16 so everything's in focus then you can slowly reduce your aperture to about 1.8 so you're really kind of closing in on that character focusing on them it's a really really interesting feature that is just so niche but because we've got a variable nd in here the variable nd will work in conjunction with the gain or with the iso to allow that exposure to stay completely consistent even though we are opening or closing our iris i think it's a really cool feature massive Massively, massively niche. I'll leave a link in my description to one of Philip Bloom's videos on doing depth of field pulls. There's some amazing examples in there so that any of you who don't know what a depth of field pull is, go and check that out. I might even try and make a whole YouTube video on how we can utilize that technique to try and tell specific stories about characters or find ways that that technique can be used. Next up, we've got cache recording. Now, cache recording is basically where the camera is constantly recording, let's say like a 30 second clip. As soon as you hit record, the camera will add that 30 second clip onto the start of your clip on your memory card. Cache recording is really popular when it comes to wildlife videography. So let's say that like you're filming a monkey and you're kind of like waiting for him to scratch his ass or something. Instead of you sitting there recording the whole time, just taking up all your memory, deleting it, recording again, deleting it, just stick your cache recording on. You literally wait until that monkey scratches his ass, press the record button, boom. You've got 30 seconds from before you actually press the button and you're good to go. It's great for recording things like lightning, action sports when you can't anticipate when the action's gonna happen. Let the action happen, hit record, and you're always gonna get it. And for the first time, we've actually got this in S and Q mode. So at 60 frames a second, you can do up to 16 seconds. And in 120p, you can do up to five seconds. Now, five seconds of 120p recording is quite a long time. And the final feature is that we can now monitor 
four audio channels. Originally, we could only monitor two audio channels on the EVF, now we've got up to four. So those of you that do multi-mic setups and you've got four different channels, you can monitor all of them on the screen, which is massively helpful, especially if you're literally a one-person operator, you've got your headphones on, you can't hear every single channel. It's great to see that you're not peaking, great to see that your audio channels are actually coming through. For me personally, I wouldn't really use it. I maximum do about two channels when I'm recording, but um, it's a very, very nice feature for some people. So, what do you think about the updates, you lot? I know a lot of you use the FX6. It's like bloody gold dust to get at the moment. Sony, you do need to sort out your stock levels because I know so many people that are trying to get an FX6 but just can't get your hands on them at the moment. For me, touch tracking, bokeh control, and recording externally via the HDMI, they're probably the best things for me. Let me know what you think in the comments, you lot, and I'll be catching you lot in the next one, mate. Bye.